confused because it's not conservatives making a link between these scientists and threats to national security. It's the government's own security agencies themselves saying that these individuals, quote, were collaborating with foreign entities that present a threat to the security of Canada. We're talking about research with pathogens and deadly viruses, while at the same time these individuals were on the payroll of the People's Liberation Army for the communist regime in Beijing. Now, rather than inform Canadians and come clean at the outset, the government went into overdrive to cover it up. How could the Prime Minister be so callous and selfish that he would try to protect himself rather than the security of Canadians? Sorry, the Honourable Minister for Mr. Innovation. Speaker, I'm very happy to answer to my colleague because Canada has shown leadership when it comes to national security, Mr. Speaker. That's something the Conservative will not want to ally to Canadians. But let me refresh their memory because they tend to be selective when it comes to the facts. On the 16th of January, Mr. Speaker, we announced that we will ban funding for research in sensitive areas. There's 100 entities around the world, Mr. Speaker. We work with our Five Eyes allies. We work with research centre in this country. We work with university. Mr. Speaker, Canadians know that we will always put national security first and defend the interests of Canada. The Honourable Member from Regina Capel. They want to give themselves a gold star that finally, three years later, after fighting, kicking and screaming to keep these documents hidden, that now they've been released only because Conservatives demanded it. Let's remember the facts. They ignored and refused to comply with four parliamentary orders. They took the unprecedented step of taking the Speaker of the House of Commons to court to keep these documents yes. hidden, and then they called the snap election, hoping it would all go away. If this was all just an administrative issue, then why the cover up? Yeah. Yeah. The, hon the Honourable Minister of Health. In the first order, uh, one of the things that is disturbing about what the, mem the member is, su is supposing is that if he was in government, uh, and I hope that that doesn't happen, uh, that they would interfere in the redaction process and they would be involved in it. Uh, we obviously did not do that, particularly not with national security. Uh, what we did do, and in fact, he, uh, the member opposite and I had a conversation about this. First, I suggested immediately that they see the documents at NSI COP. He said that wasn't good enough. So I created an ad hoc committee. The ad hoc committee gave them the opportunity not only to see the documents, but put to an independent arbiter whether or not they should be released publicly. We did that together. The documents are released. They're now before us. The Honourable Member for Megantic Éclairable. Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister is uh, recognized for his admi admiration for, the, uh, for China's basic dictatorship. After eight years, he uh, left uh, he let the Chinese Communist Party interfere in our elections. He turned a blind eye to the interference of uh, in, with the Chinese di diaspora. And uh, with this Winnipeg lab matter, we see that there are people who represent a credible and serious danger to compromise Canada's national security. Will the Prime Minister finally admit that he tried to cover up these documents to protect himself instead of protecting Canadians? Gonna have been the Honourable Minister of Innovation. Mr. Speaker, people listening at home must be saying, well, where were the Conservatives on January 16th? They must wonder, because on January 16th, Mr. Speaker, we announced uh, as a government that we were going to ban funding. May I urge members, please, who have not been recognized, to wait uh, their turn, and that way we'll be able to have a proper discussion instead of uh, shouting across the aisle. The Honourable Minister, please continue. 22 seconds remaining. Mr. Speaker, I hope that the Conservatives will listen this time, because on January 16th, Mr. Speaker, we banned research in sensitive areas uh, to work with 100 different companies. We are, are working with our allies to protect uh, science, to protect intellectual property, and to protect the work that is done by our universities, Mr. Speaker. We are always there to defend Canada's interests. The Honourable Member for Mégantic-Lérable. Where was the minister, Mr. Speaker, in July 2019 when two scientists were expelled from Canada, Mr. Speaker, by uh, by CSIS, 
That was in 2019. That was more than four years ago, Mr. Speaker. What we learned yesterday is that the Prime Minister ignored four parliamentary orders to produce papers. He uh, took the Speaker to court, which is, has never been seen before, for the worst cover-up uh, in history. Why did the Prime Minister choose to protect himself instead of Canada's national security? <laughs> The Honourable Minister of Innovation, Mr. Speaker, people listening at home must be shocked. We have just told Conservatives once again that not only the Prime Minister, but all members of the government on this side of the House, we take national security seriously. On January 16th, uh, we did not ban, ban one research entity, but 100 uh, so we are protecting universities and colleges from this type of thing. So that's the type of measure we're putting in place to protect Canada's interests.